It's everywhere you look these days, right? AI writing movie scripts, composing symphonies, probably making a better cup of coffee than us by now. It seems like it. But one tech giant has been strangely quiet during all of this. Apple. Until now, at least. It's true. The tech world has been buzzing about Apple intelligence since those rumors first started popping up. Yeah, and those rumors have been kind of all over the place. Release dates, what iPhones will actually be able to get it, what it can actually do. It's been a lot to follow. A lot of speculation. Exactly. But that's what this deep dive is for. You guys have sent us a ton of articles on Apple intelligence, so we're diving in to figure out what it is, why it matters, and if it's actually as revolutionary as everyone's saying. And it's worth noting that Apple, as innovative as they are, they sometimes like to do their own thing. So while everyone else has been rushing to roll out all of these new AI features, Apple's been more cautious. That's one way to put it. Like that article from Tom's Guide about the release date talks about how Apple is actually rolling this out in stages. It's almost like they're dipping their toes into the AI pool instead of just jumping right in. What do you think about that? I think it's interesting. It kind of suggests that maybe they're hesitant about something or maybe they're trying to figure out the best way to do it. You know how Apple is. Yeah. They always want things to just work. Right. Exactly. So it's not just Siri with a frame coat of paint. This is like AI woven into the core of your iPhone, uh, right? Yeah. Like I was reading about those AI writing tools that are supposed to be part of it. Imagine being able to just like clean up an email with a tap or get suggestions for how to phrase something better. And it's not just for creative writing. It's for everyday communication. Yeah, exactly. Imagine what that could do for productivity. I know. I mean, it sounds like something straight out of a dream. And that's how Apple is positioning Apple intelligence. Not as some big, flashy thing, but as something that just works in the background. It makes your life easier. Right. Like the cleanup feature for photos, which you mentioned earlier. I mean, you can tell what's in your pictures and just get rid of stuff you don't want. Like that photo bomber in the background might seem like a small thing, but... You know, it solves a real problem. For sure. And it's actually available right now, even before Apple Intelligence fully launches, right? Right. So I feel like that's got to have people even more curious about what else is coming down the pipeline. It does. And speaking of curious, we have those teen survey articles from Mac Rumors and 9 to 5 Mac. And apparently this whole Apple Intelligence thing is causing quite a stir with the younger generation. Yeah, it's interesting. Those surveys really highlight um, an important point. To really get the most out of Apple intelligence, you need to have an iPhone with at least an A16 chip. So not everyone is going to be able to jump right in. Right. If you have an iPhone older than an iPhone 15 Pro or a 15 Pro Max, then you're kind of left out for now. Which I guess begs the question for everyone listening, mm -hmm. do you have the right iPhone? Mm -hmm. And if you don't, is this the push you needed to finally upgrade? Yeah. It's a good question. Seems like Apple's trying to drum up excitement for the next iPhone by making these AI features a must-have. It seems that way, and it looks like it's working. Yeah. You know, that survey said that while overall the demand for the iPhone 16 is actually a little lower this time around. Really? Yeah, about 30% of the people they talked to said that Apple intelligence was the main reason why they decided to upgrade. Wow. So oh. they're really buying into the hype. Yeah, they're excited about these new features like that Genmoji thing. Oh, yeah, where you can make your own custom emojis from photos. Now that's just cool. It's definitely attention grabbing. And it makes sense, right? People, especially younger people, want to be able to express themselves. Mm -hmm. And what better way than with a custom emoji? That's true. But, okay, let's not forget about the people who aren't glued to their iPhones 247. What about people who are on iPads and Macs? Are they going to get to experience the magic of Apple intelligence too? Of course they are. Apple's not going to leave anyone out in the cold. That Tech Radar article, Apple Intelligence's release date is almost here, mentions that Apple's updating iPadOS and macOS Sequoia alongside iOS 18, and they're bringing those same AI-powered features to Macs and iPads too. So no matter what Apple device you're rocking, you'll eventually be able to get in on this. It's not just an iPhone thing, it's an Apple ecosystem thing. That's an important distinction. They're integrating Apple Intelligence into everything. It says a lot about how serious they are about AI. Okay, but are they actually doing anything new here? That BGR article, iPhone 16, Apple intelligence release date, made a good point. It feels like they're kind of late to the AI party. Yeah, other companies have been offering these kinds of AI features for a while, you're right. So what makes Apple intelligence different? Well, Apple has always cared about making tech easy to use more than anything else. Right, they want things to be intuitive. Exactly, Apple's not just trying to be first, they want to do it the Apple way, you know? Yeah. They want to make sure that these features fit seamlessly into their products. 
and that they actually make life better, not more complicated. It's like they're saying, yeah, we could have done this a while ago, but we were waiting for the right time to do it right. Exactly. And that kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier about their slow rollout strategy. They're taking their time. They're watching how people use these features. And maybe they'll make changes based on that feedback. It's a different approach. A very Apple approach. It's not just about adding features. It's about creating an experience. That's exactly right. And, you know, the, something that keeps coming up in these articles is this idea that even though the tech behind Apple intelligence is really impressive, the most interesting thing about it might be how it changes how we behave. Oh, that's really interesting. What do you mean by that? Well, let's think about Genmoji again. On the surface, it's just a fun little AI tool, right? Right. But it also hints at a change in how we talk to each other online. So we were talking about Genmoji and how it might actually change how we communicate. Right, right. Because before, we've had the same set of emojis to use. And yeah, they've added more over time. But with this... It's totally personalized. Yeah. It's like, instead of just choosing from the same options as everyone else, you get to create something truly unique. It's like, you know, instead of saying, I'm happy with a smiley face that everyone else uses, you can say it with an emoji that's totally you. Okay, yeah. I see what you mean. But then doesn't that kind of create a whole new set of problems? Like, what if my attempt at a totally me emoji just ends up confusing everyone? Right, exactly. And that's what's so interesting about this. It's not just about the tech anymore. It's about how we as humans adapt to it. Will Genmoji help us understand each other better, or will it just lead to more miscommunication? It's like we're all in uncharted territory here trying to figure it out as we go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's a whole new world. So we've covered a lot of ground about Apple intelligence, the features, the release, and all the hype around it. But now that we're wrapping up, I'm curious to hear your final thoughts. Is Apple intelligence really as revolutionary as everyone's saying it is? You know, it's definitely a big deal, a major step forward in AI for sure. Yeah. But honestly, I think it's bigger than just one product or one company. It's like we're seeing a real shift in how we use technology and maybe even how we connect with each other because of it. Yeah. And Apple is right there at the center of it. It's going to be exciting to see how it all plays out. It really is. And I have a feeling this is just the beginning. Like we're just scratching the surface of what's possible with AI. It's exciting, for sure. Maybe a little bit nerve wracking too, right? Oh, absolutely. But that's the future for you. And on that note, we're going to wrap up this deep dive into Apple intelligence. As always, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back next time with another deep dive into the world of tech.